Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. Welcome to a early morning get ready with me. Can you hear my child in the background? So this video was supposed to be for all of my newbies. I go through setting up your compact for the first time, my recommended order of application, all the things I literally start from beginning to end with my application and share all my tips and tricks along the way. So if you want to check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you see when my next video is live. And as always, thanks for being here. friends. All right, guys, bear with me. I'm not quite awake, but got to get ready for the day. Hopefully I don't spill this cup of coffee on me. I just did walking back from the bus stop because yes, I carry my coffee with me. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? I am on my second cup. I promise I will be awake by the time I finish this one. Oh, I don't know how people can't drink coffee. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to, I have not even washed my face yet. I am gonna take you guys through exactly how I would recommend setting up your palette. Um, this is gonna be for the beginners, new to mascara beauty. I'm just gonna start from the very beginning and I'm gonna show you order of application, all the things. Okay. So I did my skincare last night. So usually in the mornings, all I do is take, take a wipe. I love this simple brand. And I'm just going to wipe off any remaining like moisturizer I pretty much had from the night before. So I'm gonna clean my eyes really well. I'm gonna let that dry before I do my skincare. Okay, well that didn't take long at all. My son already woke up, my youngest. He's in the other room. So if I get through this without him barging in, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> mm. My dog is being very vocal today too. Oh, it's early. Where was I? Okay, so my face is definitely dried by now. Um, I'm going to keep it simple today. I'm not even going to do my normal morning skincare routine. I usually use vitamin C, niacinamide, stuff like that. Serums are fine to use. You just want to make sure they fully absorb before you go in with your makeup. So my Ride or Die SPF, and it's also a makeup crimping primer. This one's great. It doesn't have any kind of silicones in it that will give longevity issues with our makeup. So I love my glow screen. By super goop and I'm just going to put this on all over now I don't recommend this one if you do not like a dewy finish to your skin it has little mica particles that will actually give your skin that glow and it looks really glowy right now but I promise it kind of dies down <gasps> once it absorbs and there we go. So I'm asked all the time, like how long to let moisturizer or SPF soak as in. As long as it feels absorbed, you're good. I say 15, 20 minutes and you're good. Unless you use really heavy emollient type products, then you're going to have to play around with it and see if you might need a little bit longer. Um, I usually don't recommend those heavy creams unless you have super dry skin, but this makeup will help your dry skin. I promise it'll moisturize it over time. So while that's soaking in, I'm gonna go ahead and I already, before I sat down, got my perfecter ready. So I ran this under water, I squeezed it out until it fully doubled in size um, under the running water. Once it did, I fully squeezed it out and then I squeezed it out two more times in an absorbent towel. So while I'm getting ready, it is drying out a little bit until it is the perfect consistency to use. Um, I'm not gonna prime my face with the setting spray like I sometimes do because this has a gripping primer in it, but that is an option. Um, you don't necessarily need a primer with this makeup. 
unless you have oily skin, and then I do recommend a mattifying primer just where you're oily. So as far as eye primers go though, I can't live without it or I will get creasing and my eyeshadow won't stay. I have oily eyelids. So I always put this on kind of first thing. This is Thank Me Later. Um, I'll link it below if you need a good affordable eyeshadow base. All right, so while all that goodness is <laughs> soaking in, let's set up our palette. So, so if you are brand new to this makeup, one of the hardest things is you get these gorgeous little tins, right? They're all labeled, but then you open them up and you drop them in your compact, okay? And then suddenly you can't tell which color is which, okay? You're not used to it yet. It takes a little time to before you can like be able to visually be able to recognize the colors. And you don't wanna have to be constantly looking at the bottom in order to see what color is where, right? So what I recommend my clients when they're first starting out is to go in order of application when you are filling your compact for the first time. So this video will hopefully help you kind of know what order to put it in. And it's highly based on how you want to wear your makeup. So for me, I use a color corrector. If you can't tell, I've got redness, dark circles, some hyperpigmentation. So number one thing with this makeup, guys, please listen. If you can listen to one thing, take this away. With this makeup, you have to match the darkest tones of your face first. So if you are using a color corrector, if you're wanting good coverage, better coverage, you've got to match those darkest tones. Otherwise, I wish I could explain why, but with this makeup, if you wear a shade too light on your skin, say I'm gonna take this very lightest shade, which this matches my darkest tones this is way too light. This is my brightener, okay? If I was to put this directly to the skin, first of all, it's gonna look bad. <laughs> it's not gonna blend in well. Um, it's probably gonna make every pore stand out. Um, and it's just, it's just not gonna give any coverage. The crazy thing about these creams is that it will actually fade. And within a couple of hours, it will look like I'm not wearing anything at all. And that is your number one sign. You have a color that is too light for you. And I wish I knew the science of why, but it is something to do with the nature of these creams that if your shade is too light, it'll rub off, it won't stick, it won't stay. It is just like the weirdest thing, it fades, it goes away. So <laughs> believe me when I tell you the right color is key. I have learned through years of working with clients and color matching and troubleshooting that I promise you too light a shade is gonna give you all of those issues, okay? So if you are having great longevity, great coverage, you have the right colors, okay? Um, there's a lot, I'm not even gonna get into troubleshooting. There's a lot to this makeup because it's so different, because of the pigmentation of these creams. Um, I wish I knew why they worked the way they do, but I promise you that's the way they work. So when it comes to putting your colors in the compact, you always apply darkest to lightest because if you were to say brighten under your eyes first, I have darker tones here. Um, this isn't going to match those tones and it's going to increase the look of all my fine lines and wrinkles around my eyes and it's not going to look pretty, but I'll show you how you can apply and still get that brightening effect, but it's all about placement and putting those darker colors first. So darkest to lightest when it comes to highlights. Number one, if you learn anything from me, please apply darkest to lightest. Okay, so that is my color corrector. And then I usually will tell my clients it depends on how you like to wear your makeup. So I like to wear more medium coverage, I would say. So I normally color correct and then I put my main shade all over, okay? And this makeup is designed so you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, our contours, which they're the only ones that I've ever heard of, they actually are part of the foundation. So our contours actually give coverage. You don't have to put 
your highlights, which is what you would think of most like foundation, right? Um, the part that matches your general skin tone. You don't have to put that where you're gonna put the contour because your contour will give you coverage. If you want more coverage where you're contouring, put this everywhere, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I wear it um, and show you the coverage you can get. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Sandy second, okay? If you are brand new to contouring and it may intimidate you a little bit, um, you're learning placement, and you're just a, more scared of it, which I totally get. When I first started wearing this makeup, I contoured first. So if that's you, put your contour in your palette first. You can put it where it goes, and then you can go in with your highlights where you don't contour. And I find that is probably one of the easiest ways for beginners, um, unless you want coverage or unless you have redness and hyperpigmentation like me, you are definitely gonna wanna layer in order to get better coverage. Um, I don't find I get the coverage that I like from contour alone on these areas because I have redness and hyperpigmentation in that area. So, okay, but that being said, I'm gonna put contour in third, okay? So I've got color corrector, main shade, contour that was Astoria so after the contour I find this next step is one that I tend to switch up on the daily so I'm gonna do it is what what I think would be the easiest way so next I'm gonna put bronzer so if you are not a bronzer girl you can skip this but I'm gonna put Bella in after that just because I feel like it's easier to do for newbies in this order um, but I'll, when I when I get there I will explain uh, that is definitely one you can switch up the order depending on the look you're going for. Okay, so then I'm going to put in my brightener. This is my accent brightener, my very lightest highlight. Okay, and then I'm going to put in my lip and cheek. Okay, they're convertible colors. Use it for blush and lips. Okay, now I threw in a few extras because I can't help myself. Usually I like to recommend getting a matte lip and cheek and then a gloss. I can't wear the mattes on my lips by themselves, so I always seem to top it with a gloss. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in there um, when I do my lips. And then illuminator. So this is, this is actually a perfume. It doubles as an illuminator. It has our rose gold in it. Um, illuminator is one of the very last steps. And you know what? I probably should put these in before. I went ahead and threw in a lip conditioner. That is usually the first step for me, actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on first. Um, if you don't have one, most people don't start with one, so you'd start with your highlights. And then let's put this back in order. Let's say I'm gonna put very good with the order now. Um, setting powder setting powder needs to go before your illuminator um because you don't want to cover up the illuminator with a powder if you're going to use the setting powder and then i'm going to go ahead and do my eyes very last i like to do them in order as well so i usually do well i actually usually do lightest to darkest but let's do it in order so my mid-tone matte, my lid color. Let's do my brightener and then my brows and my liner color. Okay, so there you go. I filled it up. I didn't know I was completely filling it. So this is a mini double decker. It holds 12 full size tens and I just filled her up pretty easy. Okay. Let's talk application. Since this one is for beginners, we're going to start with my two favorite brushes that I recommend for beginners, which is the B squared and the detail hack. Okay, if you can only get one brush, you can start with the 30 second. I'm always completely honest and transparent. It is not my favorite for beginners. It picks up so much product. It can be really tricky to use. 
um, when you're learning this makeup. Number one issue with this makeup is applying too much. Um, I say that all the time, but people still do it. It's just, it's just difficult when you're not used to such a highly pigmented product. This is by far my favorite for mature skin and for layering any shades or for buffing on for a natural look. From natural to full, this will give it, and it doesn't pick up so much product like a lot of our other brushes do because this brush isn't quite as dense. Um, it is still dense, it is still designed for cream makeup, but I swear it is a game changer. Okay, so that is the blush bronzer, okay? And then we have the detail hack, which we're gonna contour and let's see, we'll brighten with this one. I will try to not use all the brushes, which if you've ever seen any of my other videos, you know I'm kind of a brush fanatic. I use almost all of them every day. In fact, I usually use two of some of them, <laughs> my favorites. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start with application. All right, so I showed you guys, I need to color correct. If you don't color correct, just skip this step and you can go straight into your main shade or you can contour first. Um, if you have dark circles, you need to put your color corrector down first. You gotta match that darkness or you're not gonna get any good coverage under your eyes. So what I like to do is just kind of tap in Okay, these creams are super creamy, but I'm not digging in. I'm just barely getting the smallest amount on my finger. You can use a brush for this, but I find when you're learning how much to apply, I can feel this with my, with my finger and I can feel if I have too much. And I can use the warmth of my finger to distribute it, okay? And if you don't wanna like pull at your under eye, you can easily just tap it on Okay, I then switch to my other finger, make sure it's not too thick, okay? You will feel it if it's too thick. That is the thinnest layer, okay? And suddenly all of my blue purple tones are gone. Okay, so that was, I call magic mango. It really is magic, <laughs> at least for me. Okay, now I usually use a brush for the next step, but I'm gonna try to limit my brushes. Um, if you do wanna use a brush and you don't like using your finger, um, obviously clean hands, but if not, I'm gonna use a small end of the detail and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna barely, barely touching, okay? The biggest thing with this makeup is gentle pressure. Don't use too much with the creams. You wanna use less is more, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of color correct all those veins in my eyes. And I'm putting this on over my eyeshadow primer because otherwise I would have horrible creasing. I can't wear creams on my eyes unless I prime first. Okay, so get in those. This brush is really good for the eyes because it gets in those little corners, right? In there, we're I'm very purple. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up this brush now. Same thing, I'm still gonna color correct. So I am kind of redness, have this redness in my mask area. You can tell my nose is a lot darker. I've got a lot of freckles there and it just pulls me a lot darker. So I need that darker shade. Otherwise, I don't get enough coverage on my nose and it will fade through the day um, by just using my main shade that I use everywhere else. So this is all I'm gonna do, tap. Okay, then I'm gonna just kind of press to distribute and then I'm gonna buff that on where I need it. When it comes to color correctors, you gotta know less is more, don't apply too much or it'll pull you too dark or too warm very easily since most of our color correctors are warmer shades. Okay, so then for my nose, I need more coverage there. So I'm gonna kind of I can still buff a little bit, but I'm gonna press that on. And then I have a lot of redness around here. A lot of people have broken capillaries through there. Mango is a great shade for that as well. Okay, I've got a little bit of redness right on the tip of my chin. Okay, and then in between my brows, I'm just gonna go right here in this area. Okay, so buffing on gives a really nice thin layer. 
matches those darkest tones and then we can use our main shade to bring it back to matching. Okay, now I have some hyperpigmentation, some unwanted friends that are healing and that have that nice red, um, red marks that we get from acne, right? So um, I'm gonna use the multitasker and I'm going to color correct those. So I'm gonna use the mango again and I'm just gonna use it right where I need it. And for extra coverage, okay? So I always recommend buffing in that first layer and then going in and, and pressing on more where you need extra coverage. When it comes to blemishes though, you might notice after you put on your main shade and contour, we might have to go back in and apply a little bit more until we get fully covered there. Okay, so I've got more here. You saw my YouTube or my Instagram video. I just used my my skin spatula on my nose. So they're kind of it's kind of redder than normal. All right, and then my hyperpigmentation. Again, you can use this detailed brush. I like to use my finger because I feel like I get better coverage using the warmth of my finger right there on that spot. Okay, so since I want to build up my coverage and even myself out, I'm going to pick up the brush again and I'm going to go in with my main shade. Okay, again, tap. Now, when this step, you don't want to pull at the makeup. You don't want to buff it if you've used a color corrector. If you haven't used a color corrector, then you totally can. I'm going to kind of press on and bounce the color everywhere in order to build up my coverage and distribute it. And this is why I like to fully put my highlight there because I already have really great coverage just with that alone. And I find my contour blends out so much better and it doesn't look patchy. when I have my highlight down first. Now, if you've seen my videos over on IG, I totally use this same method when I want light natural coverage that's really showing my skin. And I just apply less of everything and you can still get a really natural coverage using a color corrector. I just have a uh, quite a few blemishes right now that I need covered. So we're gonna go with medium. This is why I love this makeup because depending on the day, you can get as light or as heavy a coverage that you possibly need. Um, you don't have to just switch products. You can use the same thing every day. Customize it to whatever your skin is doing, right? Because we all have those times where we need a little bit more. Okay. So I'm gonna use a little bit more under my eyes. I feel like I got there real good. And then, there we go. Okay, so what's next in our compact? We got contour, so let's go ahead and pick up our detail. Now, when it comes to contour with this makeup, it's very different than our creams, okay? So know that all of our creams, when you get it straight out of the 10, can sometimes feel a little bit drier um, depending on each one. I feel it kind of varies, but sometimes they have almost like a coating to kind of protect them in storage. So our contours are very dry, so know that. Um, it's not that you maybe have too light of a contour. I can, I'm, I can wear almost all of them it's that you gotta be able to really get that color on the brush. So I don't recommend barely tapping. I recommend pouncing with some pressure, okay? If you can clearly see it on the brush, you got plenty. And I like to do it that way because it evenly distributes that contour on my brush, doesn't clump it up like swiping does um, to where it's not gonna give 
an even distribution on my cheeks. I'm all about whatever's gonna apply it as easy as possible. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start up with my ear. I'm gonna start going towards the corner of my mouth, stopping at the corner of my eye, and I'm just gonna keep pressing. Now I got, I feel like I pounced in there probably more than I needed to. I still got color on my brush. So let's see, I probably have enough for both sides. <laughs> yep, see if you get very little, you don't even have to blend, look at that. You can simply, it blends as, as it goes. Okay, so I'm just pouncing. I'm gonna slightly move my brush upwards while pouncing and it fades that contour. Okay, so this to me is very natural. This is gonna be much more dramatic. Don't be scared of contour. These contours, in fact, actually blend out too much for some people. If you go in and start going like this, you're gonna notice your contour is just suddenly gone. So I just recommend barely blending the top part of the line, leaving this a little bit more so you can see it. Okay, if that's too dramatic for you, pick up that B squared again. This one's a great one. You can just kind of pounce it along that lower line and it'll kind of blur it out. So we'll do natural on one side. This one's a little bit more cut. I like mine like this, but it took me a long time of contouring before I liked this. I'll tell you in the very beginning, you couldn't even see my contour. So be patient with yourself. If you're like, I can't see my contour, you'll get used to it, I promise. Okay, same thing, but now we're gonna contour the forehead. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of press it along my hairline. Okay, foreheads are pretty easy. You just wanna blend up into your hairline and then down your forehead. So that, that highlight and contour. We don't want a defined line like we do here. We want those to fade, right? We don't want any kind of definition on our forehead. We just want it to frame our face. It can give the appearance of a shorter forehead as well, but we just want that subtle, subtle darkness, right? Okay, all right, let's go under the jawline. Okay, same thing. Start back by the back of the ear where the shadow would be the darkest. And you wanna go up under the jaw, okay? And then I like to pull down the neck to blend, okay? Last thing we want is a line along the side of our face. So this one is more subtle. You don't have to do it but it is going to define out that jaw. Okay, and so I usually don't do nose contours in beginner videos, but if you are curious about nose contouring, you can easily just use this small brush. I'm just gonna do a real quick one from the brow. And we do two stripes, parallel stripes. Okay, so two parallel stripes. And that's it, okay? And that's gonna kind of slim the nose, but the highlight is what makes nose contours really work. So we'll get there in a second. Okay, so we fully contoured. Now we can go ahead and bronze. Okay, so I went ahead and threw the bronzer in there next because I feel like um, people sometimes get nervous about putting bronzer over their blush, which I do it all the time. I put it on over the blush or I put it under the blush and I do it in different times. Sometimes I accent brighten and then I just bronze around it. But if you bronze first, you don't have to worry about covering up that brightener. So I'm gonna use Bella and I'm gonna kind of squeeze this so it doesn't get in my brightener. Okay, and I'm gonna use Bella and the B square. Okay, and so bronzer is different than contour. Bronzer gives warmth to the face whereas contour will give that shadow and def definition and will actually you know, chisel out our features. Bronzer is just for warmth. So if you are a bronzer girl like me, you love that warm glow, you're gonna love Bella because there's nothing more natural about a cream bronzer. So what you do is you wanna do the high points of the face where the sun will naturally hit. So we're gonna do forehead, 
nose, chin, cheeks, okay? Highest points of the face, okay? And this is about the only brush that I swirl, okay? And I like to kind of go around this area in like a C formation, okay? And then I'll go on the cheeks. And you'll notice I still pounce this one a lot because, whoa, because I have that hyperpigmentation. If you do this, you're gonna move that product. So I tend to pounce a lot. And then over here I swirl because I don't have that spot to worry about. Okay, so we're just adding that warmth back. If you're a girl that has a naturally lighter neck, then Bella is a saving grace because you can just pull it down your neck, add a little bit of warmth, and bring it into your face, um, match them up. Okay, so let's go ahead and accent brighten. So I normally accent brighten with a different brush. So we're gonna try this small end of the detail hack. Okay, now I use an accent brightener, let's see, about three shades lighter than this one, four shades lighter than this one. Okay, with accent brighteners, um, it's important to note that in order to get it to not look like it's sitting in your pores or looking like makeup is less is more and don't ever do it without this. <laughs> I promise you won't like the makeup if you don't use your perfector. So I usually recommend my girls that are starting with this makeup to use this at every step of the layering process. If you're doing a color corrector, press it in then apply your main shade, press it in, just use this all the way. I don't do that because I know I'm using the right amount every time because I've been using this for three years. You'll get used to how much product, but it is takes a little trial and error, a little bit of troubleshooting before you know how much of this product to use to get the coverage you want and to get it to not be too thick, not too tacky, to still look like skin. It's kind of a learning process when you're brand new to this. Once you get the hang of it, you don't necessarily need to use the perfector at every step. This removes excess, so that's the only way to remove excess if you are getting too much. Um, I, though, use it after I brighten because once you are layering those highlights, it, anything lighter will increase the look of texture with this makeup. So that's why we can't apply it first it's too light for the skin directly under it. It's gonna look like texture, it's gonna show lines, all those things. And the lighter you go away from your main shade, the more it's gonna show texture. So sometimes it's better to start with a more subtle brighter brightener, and then if you wanna add more of a pop, um, you can layer it. Um, I just did a video over on Instagram showing how you can get that pop without just going down a shade but by actually using a slightly lighter shade over your normal brightener. It makes a world of difference. It's the only way I can do it without showing texture under my eyes because that is my problem area. So this shade I know works well for me. It matches my undertones. As an artist, an artist can pick the brightener that is perfect for your skin tone because they are not all equal. You have to Find one for your skin tone, otherwise it's not gonna look good. And like a lot of them can pull chalky, um, and that's not a good look. Okay, so again, we're just gonna tap in, okay? I always start at that inside corner, okay? And I like to kind of tap outwards to distribute and then down along that contour stripe, okay? So we contoured right there, so I'm gonna brighten all the way up to that, that stripe all the way to my nostril, okay? And then all the way back up. And I'm just gonna slowly kind of tap in those areas. Now, if you're like me and you have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of uh, wrinkles right there, you don't have to brighten in that area. I tend to not want to add it right there. I just kind of slowly tap to distribute it over there to get that triangle of light to get that brightness without necessarily adding the brightness right there, if that makes sense. So if you have more mature skin, I recommend sticking to like this area right here, not going all the way up to the eye, but just going right here and making 
a smaller triangle. So you can still brighten in that inside corner, but kind of avoid where you have those issues like mine. Okay, does that make sense? So just right there. Okay, it will still give that pop of brightness. It just won't get in your smile lines. Okay. So let's see, now I like to brighten the center of my face as well. Now this is optional. I feel like this is the best step if you have a lighter neck to bring in the lightest tones in your face. So I definitely do recommend it. If I color match you, you will see where I mark up your face and show you exactly where to place each shade. So I like to go in kind of an upside down triangle right there. Now we already bronze, so we can now brighten that back up and go all the way down in between the brows. And then we make our little highlight stripe. I can never do this straight or even to save my life, right in between the contour stripes. Okay, this is what's going to give that slimming effect to the nose. Okay, and then I like to do my Cupid's bow and then the center of the chin which the center of the chin is really important. If you have a lighter neck, or if you have a lighter neck, you can take that brightener and apply it along the jawline right here to bring in the tones of your neck. So if you have a lighter neck, I will mark that on your picture as well. So you know you need to add it just, and all you do is simply grab your brush again, lightly tap, and you're gonna just do that. Okay, press it along that, it's gonna tone that down. Layering these shades will totally, you can you can keep layering, not keep layering, maybe limit it to the number of layers, but you can definitely add that brighter shade to pull your skin back down to matching. That's all we do with the color corrector and the main shade and the brightener, right? So we're getting these areas light, bringing attention to our face, okay and bringing in your lightest tones. So that's important as well. So here is the step where I use this bad boy. Okay, so by now it's the perfect consistency. It's just cold, it's not wet, it's not really feels damp, it just feels cold to the touch. That's when I know it's perfect. So I am gonna really concentrate this anywhere I layered that accent brightener. Okay, and that is gonna take it from sitting in my pores and possibly creasing, well, for sure, for me, creasing under the eyes. I like to concentrate on my smile lines because if you do have excess anywhere you crease, you could possibly crease, right? So this is the only way to remove the excess. This is also gonna blend your makeup at the same time take away any harsh lines. So I love to just bounce it all over to press that makeup into my skin and make it look like skin again and not makeup. Okay, so guys, I'm sorry I talked too much. All right, let's move on to blush. All right, so next we have our matte. Lip and cheek. I am a big fan of layering mattes and our glossy or satins. So if you don't know, we do have three different types of lip and cheeks. So mattes are the most pigmented. They are gonna give a matte look, no glow. I love a glow on my cheeks, so, but I want pigmentation. Since these are highly pigmented, if you're having any issues with wear time on your cheeks, use a matte first. So I'm gonna pick up Plum, and I'm just gonna go one to two finger widths away from my nose, right on the apple of my cheek. And I'm just gonna press. I'm just gonna kind of keep pressing to blend and apply at the same time. Now, these shades kind of tone down after five minutes. You can apply more. You can even put a powder over them to kind of give even better wear time, but know that that's gonna tone down your lip and cheeks. I tend to like my lip and cheeks a little bit more subtle, so I don't apply mine quite as heavy. Totally personal preference, because I'm gonna layer, because I'm a layerer. So, 
That is plum. And then I'm going to flip over to the back side and I'm gonna apply a little bit of Royal, because I'm in the fall mode, um, over it. Now this one is a glossy, because you can you tell? And I'm just gonna barely tap into that and I'm gonna apply over it to give my cheeks a glow. Can you see that? Okay, now if you are, if you get a little crazy, like I feel like I got a little too far in here, you can grab your, any of your brushes, to be honest, your highlight brush. Okay, so the magic about these creams is they don't set until you set them. So you can pull them back, you can fix it, you can tone it down if you apply too much, anything you want, right? So I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and powder. So I will pick up a different brush for this. You can use your perfector. I find the best brush for me personally to control how much I use. Um, because my under eyes are an issue for me, if I use too much powder, it will age me. So I'm gonna make sure I have no creasing. Your fingers are also great tools if you do not want to powder, but you want to kind of get creasing out during the day. All it takes is two seconds, once, a, once or twice a day, pat them out and they're gone, okay? So if you don't like the look of powder under your eyes, that's also an option. I like the powder powder br power powder brush and I just simply touch, okay? And then I'm gonna just press that right under my eyes. And that's gonna keep me from creasing all day. Now, if you are oily, I usually recommend a loose powder. Um, I have a separate video all on applying for, depending on your skin type, in the description box down below. For me, I tend to get a little bit shiny in certain areas, so I just kind of press it there and anywhere I'm worried about creasing. And then I'm gonna put it on my eyelids so that I have a nice base for eyeshadows since I did apply creams there. And there you go. So my face is finally almost done. It's time for illuminator. So if you don't know what an illuminator is in mascara world, it is like a highlight in the rest of the makeup world. It adds that touch of glow. So you can tell with my glowy lip and cheeks and just the nature of these creams, it will give you glowy skin, which is one of the reasons why I love it so much. But for extra glow right on the top of the cheekbones, I love our illuminators. This one's a perfume as well, so you can add it to your wrists, um, under your ears, anything. But I do go in pretty generously when I use the perfect when I use the perfector to apply, um, and then I just kind of gently press and look at that. Okay, you can pretty much put it anywhere you want to glow. And I like the Perfector because it doesn't leave any fingerprints. I can really control exactly where I put it as well. Okay, so we've used pretty much all the shades. I'm gonna do a quick, actually I forgot to do my lips, guys. Okay, rewind. I think I do this in like every video, I just forget my lips. So, I'm gonna go ahead and use my contour to line my lips. It is great because it doesn't bleed or anything like that. It just gives a subtle shadow, makes your lips look bigger. So I've already got my lip conditioner on, so I'm, that'll give me a nice base before I put on my mattes because mattes tend to dry out my lips a little bit too much. I'm gonna layer the two shades to get um, a glossy look. Glossy look, since that's my favorite. And I'm using the multitasker. Okay, so that was Plum and Royal. The multitasker will give you a more 
pigmentation. If you want it more sheer, you can use your fingers. It's really quite versatile. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the other end and I'm gonna give myself a little bit more coverage, like I said before, where I had those blemishes. With blemishes, sometimes you have to kind of slowly layer to get the coverage you want. Especially if you use that perfecter, it could kind of pull off. It did pretty good though. Okay, so then I like to grab my powder and just kind of very gently set those areas so they're not showing their ugly heads throughout the day, right? Okay, so if you like a dewy finish like me, just remember, stay spray last, okay? This will give a dewy finish, it'll lock your makeup in place, and it will take away any of that powdery finish you just put on um, by powdering. So if you like more of a matte look or you have oilier skin or anything like that, you wanna spray and then you wanna powder. When your skin is still adjusting to these creams because they will take about anywhere from two to four weeks depending on your skin type, where your skin is getting used to all the extra moisture. If you don't know, these creams will, are occlusive. So what they do is they will hold the moisture in your skin so you're not getting any moisture loss throughout the day like you would with normal makeup. So you're gonna notice your skin is a lot more moisture out. In order to kind of get combat that while your skin is still adjusting, sometimes you need to use more of a powder while your skin is adjusting. I know I did, I used a powder until my skin was normalized and then I didn't need one anymore. And now I use minimal powder to keep it at that dewy finish. So I'm just gonna use our Stay Spray. This one does not, has, does not have SPF. I tend to recommend the non-SPF for normal skin. If you have dry skin, um, normal to dry skin, you can use the SPF version, but it will give a dewier look than the non-SPF. Does that make sense? <laughs> that was a lot. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna do a real quick eye look to show you guys the completed look. First, I'm gonna use an angled brush and Trust eyeshadow to do my brows. Okay guys, we almost made it the whole video. And now somebody's coming to visit. You wanna come say hi? Can you say hi? Come here. Say hi. <laughs> you almost made it the whole time. And the dogs think somebody's here all of a sudden. All right, guys, there you go. That's the finished look. Sorry I talked so long. I hope that helps. I That was supposed to be... What? All right, guys, so sorry. That was not supposed to be a get ready with me. He's turning on lights in this place. I hope that helped. Um, if you are brand new to Mascara Beauty, just hearing about it for the very first time, and you need help picking your colors, my color match questionnaire is in the link below the video. I'd be happy to help you out and send you all of my tips and tricks as well. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I love you guys.